Good afternoon, all. Um, okay, today's session, we're going to speak about uh, boxing tactics. Uh, we'll have three parts. I, I will start with a presentation, giving a little theory. Um, then we'll go for some practical, because of the situation, we, we have no contact and so on. So um, it will be a little general. Uh, and then we have prepared some uh, videos to, to show um, different tactics used in the bouts. Boxing tactics. Tactics is the art of performing a skill in a competition. Basically, how you solve different problems or situations. You can be a very good technical boxer, have a good, good punches, good balance, but if you don't understand when to use it, how to, to use it against uh, different types of opponent, your technique will not be of much help. You, it's very important to understand what, which situation and how I will solve it the best way possible. Boxing is mostly a tactical sport. Of course, technique and, and tactics are very much connected, but it's it, the, the tactical, the, the ring IQ, who, who this, the, decides the most. Um, when we talk about uh, strategy uh, in boxing, it, it's more about uh, the general art of projecting and directing. Wait, I can't read here the plans for the boxers. It's more related to the planning. It's what basically what is happening before, how you plan for, uh, coming for the competition. That would be the uh, strategy. And the ta tactics is more with uh, the bout. Before the bout, what is your tactics and during the bout. Tactical thinking. The ability to realistically and correctly evaluate the opponent as well as oneself. I have to be able to read my opponent. The ability to instantly recall tactical skills and combinations to be utilized under specific situations. So I, re I recognize the situation and what, what weapons do I have to solve this uh, situation. The ability to anticipate the opponent's tactics and to counteract them. Yeah, so my opponent will have his tactics and I have to outsmart him and counteract his tactics also. The ability to hide your tactics, which should prevent the opponent from sensing and counteracting the plan of attack. Um, so also, I don't, I don't show all my cards at once, but also hiding and, and coming up with, with some new things unexpected for my opponent. In the tactics, we have the offensive actions, uh, the attack or, or counterattack. That is one. Uh, do I want to lead? Do I want to press the action? Do I want to, to be first? Um, or do I want to, to wait for the opponent to read him, to let him make mistakes? Um, do I go for, if I, if I counter, uh, am I confident I am fast, I counter him directly with a punch, or I'm a little bit more safe and, and do first the defense and, and then counter from a little more safe distance? This has to do with the uh, offensive actions, uh, which I have to decide how and when to use them. Preparatory actions. Fainting, fainting with my arms, fainting with, with the body, with the eyes, fainting with the feet. Sometimes I go for direct attack, but my opponent will start reading me every time I come in with the, with the direct attack. Then I make a feint and make him a little, little off balance or insecure, and then I strike. Drawing, uh, I lure the opponent to punch at an opening. I, I leave some, some uh, body part open, uh, open to the stomach over here, and when the opponent thinks he will strike, then I'm ready to counter. Defensive actions can be active or passive. Um, normally, active is the, the one we want, we want to employ, but not every time it's, it's suitable to, to cross punches against the opponent because then my, my opponent will, will read me. So sometimes I have to wait for the right movement. So I do my defense, passive, 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 and boom, and then, I do an active defense. Uh, so I have to also select the right movement to do my counters. Which distance I want to fight um, is one of the main things uh, within tactics. Do I want to stay far away from, from a more safe? Can, can, I, can I box there with, with long punches um, without risking too much? Um, should, should I have a, a, medium, a medium distance, be a little closer to, to the opponent? Or do I want to force the bout to be very close? Am I maybe physically stronger than my opponent and I can, I can press the action and, and stay close? Maybe my opponent is very, very tall 
and um, I had to go in. The phases of the tactical actions. This is what, what happens uh, inside the body before we see the, the action, the punch. What is my uh, response? So we have three uh, phases. Phase number one, one A. Reception of the information through my senses. The eyes, ears, sensor of the skin. So I sense, oh, there's coming a punch. B, analysis. I search in my memory to verify that I have been confronted with this situation. Otherwise, I will report it. Okay, I see, I, I see, I see there is, there's coming a punch. I see, in, in, um, I analyze. Uh, okay, this situation has happened to me before. Number two, I seek in my computer bank for the best solution as fast and precise as possible. So I have to take a decision fast. Okay, what, what do I do? Do I back off? Do I maybe sleep and punch? Or do I go for, for a direct uh, punch? Do I go for a, a combination of punches, etc.? I see what weapons have I solved this situation before? Um, and I select the best uh, solution. And number three is the motoric solution, is the movement of the tactical problem. And this is the only one we see. We see there's coming a left, and we see I reply with the right and left hook. Um, but before that, I have analyzed this situation. I see there's coming a punch. I have this decided this will be my, uh, my reply, because I have probably been faced with this situation before. And if I didn't, now I have done, and this will stay in my computer bank for the next time. So when we speak about tactics, what, how can we uh, do uh, tactical training? So sparring, sparring, uh, we apply the, the tactics in, in a situation similar to the bout. In the school fight, we can train in uh, specific tactical situations. Um, we can train against uh, some type of opponent, against an offensive boxer, uh, against a defensive boxer, against a southpaw, and, and so on. So, um, or we, we, we try to put one uh, situation, boxer A throws, throws the one, two, and I have to counter that. So that when that uh, situation happens in a bout, I have trained thousands of hours on these situations, and then when the one, two comes, boom, boom, I counter fast and hard. Punching pads, the same. Punching pads is not only training combinations, training combinations, but Especially um, before the bout, when we if we know the opponent, um, if he's southpaw, the coach will stay southpaw, throwing similar punches. Or if he's tall, I can hold the pads higher, short, uh, shorter, and so on. Um, so here we include the tactical training. Uh, school boxing as well. Normally, school boxing we we talk about technique, uh, but uh, same. Tactics. Okay, this round we box on long distance. This round we box against a, a rusher. Uh, this round we box against a, a counter puncher, and so on. And the same in shadow boxing. So all this um, boxing training, uh, we include tactical training. The boxer needs to train to solve different situations. The more situations uh, I can solve, um, I will be a more complete boxer. Is why it's so important with a competition, uh, because it's it's even it's not the same to solve the situation on the pads, to solve the situation in the sparring, and to solve the situation in um, international competition. This is why you you can see that <coughs> boxers when they come out for the international competitions meet different types of uh, opponents, get this uh, experience, they they prove very very fast. That's why it's it's so important to us. Okay, here are some common tactical situations. We'll, we'll have a look at that, a little practical. This is general guidelines. When we talk about tactics, I have to start from myself. What are my characteristics? Uh, it's good to be able to adapt to, to the opponent, according to the opponent, but most importantly, it's also to be able to impose yourself, impose your style. Let the opponent uh, be, be um, care about what is my style. Um, I say like uh, Michael Jordan used to say that everybody they say they have studied me they have watched my my videos I don't know I get the ball I do the dog and I put it into the basket so if I have to care about what everybody else will do then then I will have a problem so sometimes it's better to to stick with what you know works for you um, okay 
Can we try to show? He's a tall boxer, but not only a tall boxer, but a tall boxer who likes to box at long distance. So he's there, and I am shorter than him, and he's good in that distance. So I will try to try to come inside. So I will try to force the action, coming inside. There are many ways for that, but basically try, trying to get out from, from the, the center line. I have to be fast on, on my feet, coming from the sides here, coming here, and force the bout close. And what I will probably do is, apart from variation for but sometimes for, if I go only for the head, it's easy for him to just sway back. That's good. I, I will miss. So, Little bit, I will try to tire him. I will try to, to tire him to the body and then boom, finish up. This is generally a nice against a tall boxer who boxes on, on long distance. So I have to try to, to come inside. I have to work my way inside. Not starting from too far away, but to be fast here, fast on, on my legs, go to the body. Initial. General guidance. Change against the short boxer. So he's the, he's the short boxer, and I am the long boxer who wants to be on, on the outside. So for me, fast feet, keeping this distance, avoiding coming, staying here too long. If, if I happen to come in, because that will happen, that will happen sometimes, just short and good, good, good. try to as fast as possible go out to, to a more a better distance for me. Uh, against the short boxer who, who comes in here, what is effective for the coach is the uh, uppercut. So not only great punches here, because he will be able to, to read, read this. So variation of punches from both so it's more difficult for him uh, to take more risk uh, getting inside. Uh, the tempo boxer Comes and comes and comes and comes. He's very good. He's very fit. Very, very good physical state. And he knows that. So he wants to try to break me down. So the same. I will not try to stay here for him to come, 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 come. This is, will be very tiresome for me. So fast feet. And uh, changing the distance a little bit. Because he, he throws so many punches. So he will expose himself. So I go far away, and when he comes with a looping punch, sometimes I go close, so I change again, making this to score, punch and move, punch and move, punch and move, and try to lower the intensity. Okay? Because if I move around too much, maybe I will tire before him. Then I'm in the problem. So try to lower the intensity. He comes, he comes, he comes. I just uh, he can move, start to don't lose too much energy. Let him burn the energy, and then I will be able to read him better. <clears throat> Counter boxer. So now, when I attack, he's very fast. Counter. Look. So I cannot go blindly here every time I attack. Boom! He's, he's ready here. So what I can use are, are the feint. I will feint the hit, and then counter and. Follow up with one counter, he's prepared. But maybe it will be more difficult for him to like, follow up my attacks. Here, and try to make him stay as much as possible because um, it's difficult for me boxing uh, attack at, uh, from the long distance where he, with, he reads me, comes to easy. Okay. So, once I get into this distance, I don't want to let him go. So they have to, I continue, I continue, slow him down. Suddenly he will not be able to move as much. And maybe I can fight him on my terms. Uh, also, because he likes to counter, maybe in many counter boxes they are not comfortable in leading. So I can wait for him and be defensive, fainting, and counter. So, let me count, let me count. He doesn't like And then I count. So I count, basically, count the count. 
the Russia. Russia is a, uh, not a technical boxer coming with, with a strong fit coming in, and but <coughs> here I would try to move to the side so when we can't, I don't want to stay there. Fast feet here, move side to side. You see five steps, you see the, the, the pivot, and when he, when he rushes blind here, to look, I am far away. Um, fast feet, avoid staying here when, when, when he comes with, with the strong punches, but fast feet, to to side to side movement, don't get the back against the ropes, but when he comes in with the Strong punches. Uh, next boxer, South Pole boxer. Even South Pole, no problem. South Pole boxer is the same as the right-handed boxer, the orthodox boxer. But just because it's South Pole, there's not one South Pole for everybody. South Pole is just his stance is different, but there are different styles for the South Pole as well. But what we can say, general guidance with South We have actually a, a session on South Pole uh, next week. So we just, we just touch a little bit here. But we have a little bit of battle of the league hand. Who, who will dominate here? And if he comes here, and boom, I can dominate him on the outside here. So, so probably I have a good advantage. But what happens? He, he's not going to climb. So if we change. And if I step into this punch all the time, I have to do something else. So I will have also to move to my right, when you throw the right, boom, I'm ready to come to here. So there is no one single bout, I will move all the way. It has to be all the stupid to do that. So I will move to the left, but I will also move to my right, when you throw the right, boom, I'm ready to counter, I change, I come this from the left, and very effective. My, my right hand. So I mean, sometimes no need to think about left, right. I want to get my right hand to there, right, right to the body. So this one very effective, going up. Um, so let him think also about if he wants to go to the left or to the right. I can stay here to work in and out uh, as well. Okay. So I would say I can go to the left. I can also go to the right. Uh, next boxer, puncher. Strong puncher. You don't want to you don't want to kill his strong, strong explosive punches. Uh, so he throws explosive punches, but he requires a lot of energy. So what I will try to do is not uh, at low intensity because if intensity is low, if I wait for him, then he can go comfortable there and boom boom and load up on his punches. So Probably better is to raise the intensity and don't don't uh, let him be comfortable there loading up on the country. So I will keep him this if I inch past feet the parata very punches and I am out there, tires a little bit, and I will continue continue working because I can uh, scoring punches which don't uh, Burn so much energy, um, then I will take advantage of uh, that. Little general guidelines. Uh, I repeat, most important, I have to take into consideration my own strong and, and weak points. Um, but generally, we can, we can say like that, this. And another thing, the bout is not the same first round, second round, and third round. There happens so many, many things. My opponent will adjust to me and force me to make my adjustments. Um, <clears throat> so this is constantly uh, changing. And for that, we, we need to have a big arsenal of, uh, uh, of different weapons that we use in the bout. Mm. We will look at some real bout situations where people apply some of these tactics. You see, about India versus Mongolia. Red boxer is a southpaw, but mostly 
He's a long distance boxer. He's Manish Koshik. He was in the World Championships against Mongolia, strong Mongolian Olympian. And you will see that Manish, he doesn't want to stay too long on the, on the inside, but trying to score with these long punches. Here you will see how he fast back to his distance and scoring from the outside. Fast feet all the, all the time. So the key for Manish in this bout is not take unnecessary risks. He's dominating very well from the outside, scoring, punching, and moving. Boxing, boxing, boxing. No need to risk unnecessarily to, too much fighting. Manish very good at reading his opponent and though the opponent is physically stronger Manish managed to land the, the more clear punches and good variation of punches also long distance boxer uh, we'll change, we put, okay, this one is interesting. He's also from World Championships. Red Boxer, uh, Kavinder, against a good long distance boxer, also Southpaw. Uh, Kavinder is shorter. Kavinder, before this World Championship, recently moved up from 52 to 57. And this uh, blue boxer from Finland, he moved down from 60 to 57. Um, Akavinder in this bout he's a little bit of a puncher he's a hard puncher uh, and he will he will utilize his, his power very very well in this bout and you see the blue boxer trying to box from the outside quick feet, quick punches, quick movement And even though Kavinder is shorter, he has also very, very good um, left from the distance. So, and he's not only rushing in, he waits for the opportunity and very good counters.
So here the blue boxer is forced to be a little more offensive because he's uh, losing the bout. And uh, for Kavinder, it's, it's good because he can wait for him. And he has much stronger punches. That's a good body shot there. Another good counter. So you see, in the beginning of the bout, a blue boxer was boxing from distance, trying to score from the outside. Um, and then when he, he was losing, he had to, to press the action a little more, and um, which was good for uh, our boxer because he's also a good counter puncher. And he, he used very, very well. Um, the advantage of uh, being the stronger stronger boxer okay here we see a, we can call him tempo boxer the blue boxer uh, russian alexander maletin who was a world champion and olympic medalist he's not very fast but he puts uh, great pressure on the opponents very strong and he goes hard to the body which you will see his bout is from the Sydney Olympics and his opponent trying to box from the outside but difficult to keep a strong boxer away. So here the blue boxer, he, he has to impose himself physically. If the intensity will be low, it will be difficult. Here he gets the bout where he wants it to be. He wants it to be a street fight. Second count. Another bout against another counter, uh, counter boxer. Uh, now the Russian is in red. Same Russia, Maletin, against a counterboxer from Bulgaria. Very quick on his feet, very nice movements, very fast punches, good control from the outside. So he has to press the action, otherwise he will lose easily by points. Fast footwork is very important for this tempo boxer. He cannot just go in blindly or slowly with the feet. And he invests a lot on the body punches. And variation of punches up down and down to the liver and end of the bout. This, of course, very physically demanding to box like that. But if you are physically stronger than your opponent, you can definitely impose yourself physically. Okay, next bout. You look at one bout from World Championships, the last World Championships in Russia. And here again, we have one physically strong boxer, Russian boxer, um, against one box, uh, we can call him long distance boxer, at least in this bout. You see, blue boxer from uh, England, 
He's moving, using his jab against the, Rush, the red boxer from Uzbekistan who tries to impose himself physically. He's very strong, very high intensity and very rough also. So for the blue boxer, he has to try to stay calm, stick to his game plan. Punch, move. Uh, use his superior boxing skills to solve this bout. Yes. GB and Manolo. And the Here, variation is very important. If I do the same thing over and over again, at, at one point, if my opponent is near my level, he will, uh, he will be able to adjust and I have to start doing something else. If I can do the same thing over again and my opponent never reads me, fine. But probably I will have to, to adjust a little bit. So same pattern, all three rounds, red boxer coming forward, trying to force the fight. Blue boxer not giving too much space, but scoring from the outside and moving, moving out just in time. <coughs> you see, very rough boxer, the, the red. Here you have to stay cool, pulling your head. And you will see there is, there is one moment you see where it comes a punch clearly off the stop. Look at it, this now, red. Boom. Long, long, long way off the, off the stop. This you have to, to <clears throat> be prepared for in international competitions. Stop sharing. We will look at one last. Uh, video red boxer i would call him he's uh, mostly offensive but i would call him a little bit universal boxer uh, red boxer alexey tishenko he was a two time olympic medalist and world champion he's fighting a bulgarian in blue Russia, Russia. We talked about drawing before when you try to draw the opponent to to hit the score to throw some punch and you're ready to counter. You see great balance, great combinations and Slowly increasing the pressure on the opponent and good variation of punches. There. Okay, this was um, some examples.
of different uh, situations um, which occur in the bout, different types of boxers which are uh, very common uh, in inter international boxing. Um, and like I said, the bout, the first minute of the first round is not always the same as the last minute of the, of the last round. And there happens a lot of things uh, in between where, uh, where I need to be able to adjust. One um, defining thing also is if, if my tactics um, are not working, should I be patient and think, no, it will work in the end, or I need to, to make the change uh, immediately. Um, and, and these things can be very, very tricky. Uh, before, when we had the, the scoring machine, uh, it was the, the, the one who was leading would, would tell very much um, how, how you, you can apply the, the tactics. If I am a counter puncher, uh, but I'm five points down after the first round. Okay, I want to counter, but maybe, maybe I have to, to try something else. Okay, um, uh, I will have uh, Gupta saying some things also, and we, we want to uh, give some time for questions. But Gupta, you can, you can start. Uh, good evening, friends. Yesterday, I was advised by Mr. Stethi, the Joby J English may bolte hai. उसको थोड़ा सा हिंदी में ट्रांसलेट करें आज का जो इनका जो लेक्चर था बहुत ही वैल्यूएबल था जहां तक टैक्टिक्स के बारे में बात की गई है पहले तीन चीज जो उन्होंने बताया है ड्राइंग जब आप अपना कोई टारगेट जानबूझकर खाली कर रखते हैं वो एक्चुअली खाली नहीं होता जानबूझकर बॉक्सर खाली रख लेता है वो आपको ललचाता है वहां पे मारने के लिए और जब वहां पे मारने के लिए आप आते हैं वहां उसका डिफेंस तैयार होता है और उस डिफेंस को करते हुए वो आपको काउंटर करेगा और अली इस क्वालिटी में बहुत ही अच्छा था दूसरी चीज जो आज संडियागो ने बोलिया बहुत बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट है अपने बॉक्सर्स के लिए दैट इज फेंटिंग अगर एक ही पंच का इस्तेमाल आप बार बार करते जाएंगे आपका ओपोनेंट और उसका कोच भी दिमाग रखते हैं वो भी नोट कर लेंगे तो इसलिए उसी पंच को जो आपने एक दफा मारा है उसको वेरिएशन के साथ मारने की कोशिश करो उसके साथ अपने दिमाग की रंगत को लेके आने की करो then uh, uh, fainting faint means dhokha dhokha वैसे तो नहीं दे सकते means आपके जो पंच जाए उसमें creativity होनी चाहिए जितना आपका standard ऊपर जाएगा उतना ही creativity आप कहीं और दिखाओ कहीं और मारो body पे दिखा के head पे मारा इन सभी चीजों को खेमानंद और संडियागो ने execute करके दिखाया इन दोनों का मैं बहुत ही धन्यवाद हूँ दूसरा tactics को successful बनाने के लिए दिमाग की बहुत ज रिंग के अंदर आपका जो दिमाग है हर वक्त ठंडा कूल माइंड एक्सरे आइज अगर आपका ओपोनेंट कोई भी छोटी से छोटी गलती करता है उसको इग्नोर नहीं करना उसको नोट डाउन करना है अगर वो अटैक के लिए अटैक करो अगर आपके ऊपर आ रहा है तो अपने डिफेंस को स्ट्रांग करो ओरिएंटेशन एंड एंटिसिपेशन ये दो चीज बेस है जब आप रिंग के अंदर खड़े हैं डम नहीं करना आपके ओपोनेंट की पोजीशनिंग के उसकी मूवमेंट से अंदाजा लगाने की कोशिश करो वो किस प्रकार से आपके ऊपर अटैक करना चाहता है रिंग के अंदर हमेशा इंफॉर्मेशन करेक्ट इंफॉर्मेशन अपने ओपोनेंट के बारे में कलेक्ट करते जाना है पता नहीं कौन सी इंफॉर्मेशन कब आपको फायदा दे देगी और उसके वो इंफॉर्मेशन दिमाग में जाती है वहां पे करेक्ट डिसीजनिंग और अगर आपकी डिसीजनिंग करेक्ट होगी तो आपकी जो वर्किंग मसल को कमांड है बहुत ही स्ट्रांग होगी और आपका जो एक्शन है बहुत ही सक्सेसफुल होगा देन साइड स्टेपिंग के बारे में इन्होंने बहुत मिनटली एक्सप्लेन किया अगर आप रशर के साथ खेलते हैं अगर आप इसको वैसे भी देखेंगे 76 से पहले जो साइड स्टेपिंग इतनी इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं थी रशियन बहुत रश करते थे तो अमेरिकन दे केम आउट विद साइड स्टेप तो मिस्टर संटियागो हैज वेरी क्लियरली टोल्ड अगर रशर आता है Either move to the left and move to the right and go with a counter attack. Again, South Bha, उन्होंने बहुत अच्छा explain किया, but उसके बारे में बोला next class एक और है जिसके अंदर वो South Bha के बारे में देना. Step in and out. अगर आप counter puncher के साथ खेलते हैं, अगर आप उसको भी attack करने जाएंगे, तो आपके punches उस बात आप उसको set नहीं होना. आप faint और step in and step out. 
तो आज के जो जो पॉइंट्स हैं जो मैं नोट डाउन किए थे एज पर द इंस्ट्रक्शन उन सभी पॉइंट्स को आप लोग हिंदी में नोट करो और जितना भी ज्यादा से ज्यादा है इन चीजों के ऊपर ध्यान देते हुए अपने टैक्टिस को अपने अलग अलग प्रकार के ऑपोनेंट के साथ सक्सेसफुल कराने की करने की कोशिश करो और ये तभी होंगे जब इसके अंदर थाउजेंड ऑफ टाइम आप प्रैक्टिस देंगे थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सर क्वेश्चन How do a boxer win if the opponent is more experienced in maneuver, in maneuver slash clever boxing, and what kind of tactics can be applied? Uh, so my opponent is more is a maneuver boxer, clever boxer. What kind of tactics can be applied? Um, basically, I, I gotta take him out of his comfort zone. So he's good here, do 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 managing here. I want to take him out of my uh, of his comfort zone. If I do the same boxing and he's more experienced and, and better boxer, um, probably I will fail. So I don't know. It depends on what type of boxer I am. But uh, try to break his rhythm physically. Uh, so he likes to be here, tan tan tan, and do some slick slick moves. Okay, no problem. I will da 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 da. I go fight him, break his his rhythm, go go some some hard uh, body punches, and bring bring his uh, moral down. Many, many smooth boxers, slick boxers, first round, boom, great control. Once they get little tired, boom, they go down with the head, clinching, falling down to the floor. Um, so there, the, the physically uh, stronger or, or, or physically more, more, more better endurance uh, can win, despite not having the, um, the, the technical skills and, and so on. So there are many ways to, to win in boxing. But if I am facing uh, a good boxer, from the, from the who is tuck tuck scoring from the outside, okay, I, I try to impose myself uh, physically and uh, break him down. About these nine minutes, even if I lose the first round, I, I will have invested in making my opponent tired, uh, and then I take over in the second and third. What type of uh, tactics can a boxer do for universal boxer? What type of tactics? Can a boxer do for a universal boxer? So the the number one universal boxer is just a word. There is nobody who it sounds like it's unbeatable. If he's unbeatable, why, why do I step into the ring? No. Uh, so universal boxer means that he can adapt to to different uh, situations or different type of boxing. He can box different ways, uh, but maybe he can box in ten different ways. But I, may, I can box in one way. But maybe my way. Boom! I'm very specialized in that. So I stick to that, and uh, I can win the bout. Um, so it's 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 very general. But if I am good at what I'm doing, I would do I would do that. I wouldn't bother about the the universal box. What is the difference between free fight and sparring? What is the difference between free, free fight, fight and and sparring? Free fight. Uh, I don't know because one thing is the bout, the competition. That is one thing. Sparring is training. So, if you mean free sparring or, or uh, sparring, um, for me, sparring is not 100 because the adrenaline is not there, but uh, I do my utmost best and we, we go hard. Usually, we have bigger gloves in the, in the training, but otherwise, our sparring is like you look at it and it's the same as a bout, with the difference that there is no uh, adrenaline there and if there is a difference between the two boxers, yes, then it stops being free sparring and it will be more of a controlled sparring. If both boxers are southpaw, what can we do, should do to fit them? Both boxers. If both boxers are southpaw, it's the same as in, in, uh, if both boxers are orthodox. What is for the southpaw boxer, sometimes if he's not used to another southpaw, uh, they sometimes a little more open for the right hand because that one comes from from a different angle um but otherwise it's it's pretty much the the same in a competition a boxer won the first round by 0 0.50 then the same boxer lost second and third round again by points what can be the possible reason so that the next competition should not be repeated it's uh, it's a very very general question. In a competition, a boxer won the first round by five zero. The same boxer lost the second and third round 
uh, by points. What can be the possible reason? Uh, so it, it should not be repeated. It, it, it's, it's impossible to say because it depends. Can be, can be. I started very well, but um, so in, my, in my mistakes, and the boxer took advantage of them or made the, the adjustments. Or simply, my opponent was better from the beginning. I had to give it all in the first round to win the first round, but I burned so much uh, energy, so I have uh, not much left for, for winning the second and third round. But I, I did manage to win one round because uh, I boxed very well in the first round. But maybe my, my opponent was... The normal thing would have been that he would have won the, the three rounds. Um, so it's, it's a little bit um, general question. But obviously, uh, it can happen that we are the, be the good boxer, we are the better boxer, and we win the first round. And in the corner, like, okay, we're all happy, don't, don't continue doing what you're doing, uh, looks good. And suddenly, boom, second round, hey, about changed. The opponent uh, made uh, uh, adjustments or... or just one punch, boom, I'm controlling totally, boom, I can read and suddenly get one punch and, and change the, the, the whole course of the fight. Um, so um, it's, uh, there are so many possibilities, so, so I cannot say something, okay, this is the mistake. Uh, can you please elaborate the difference between tempo and Russell boxing? Between. Okay, good, good question. Can you please elaborate the difference between tempo and rusher boxer? So uh, the rusher boxer, I used to call it slugger. Um, so for me, Gupta, you, you tell me if, if you have a different, but for me, the, so the, the tempo is the high intensity boxer. So high intensity, um, like this um, Russian Maleti who, who put pressure, 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 pressure. Uh, rusher boxer or slugger, He's a, a more limited, limited skills, limited skills boxer who comes with wild, wild uh, swings um, and easier to outbox. The tempo boxer, high intensity boxer, just because he's high intensity boxer does not mean that, that uh, he cannot box. The only thing is he's so well trained, confidence in himself, so he, he applies uh, high intensity. So, uh, Mr. Santiago explained it very well. It, these are the terms. Slugger is the very old term, which is followed by uh, 40 years back when a boxer was boxing with him. Then it came to a rusher. Uh, those who were having a very limited uh, repertoire of the punches. But uh, tempo boxing is a slightly polished from the time of Joe Frazier. A person who is having a very good quality of endurance and speed endurance. ये वो बॉक्सर करते हैं जिनके पास बहुत ही अपने शरीर के अंदर खजाना होता है इंडोरेंस और स्पीड इंडोरेंस का उनका होता है भी इतना अटैक करो करते जाओ और करते रहो जब तक ओपोनेंट छोड़ नहीं देता इट वाज वंस अपॉन ए टाइम वन ऑफ द बेस्ट स्ट्रेटजी ऑफ टेंपो बॉक्सिंग व्हाट यू नो ईच मॉडल एंड एनी मॉडल कैन बीट एनी बॉडी तो इसलिए जरूरी नहीं है उसको आप फॉलो करेंगे बट इफ यू हैव द क्वालिटी फॉलो इट so these are the old ones that are followed and changing from time to time. Difference between counter boxer and puncher boxer. So the puncher is, is a hard puncher. It's a, a, no. a knockout. N knockout. We used to call knockout boxers, but now because there, there are hardly any knockouts, so we, we, we call it a puncher or hard hitter. So the, the hard hitter, boom, boom, hits explosive and hard with the, every punch because they, 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 they load on, on the punches. Sometimes the rhythm is, uh, is low um, because they need some time to accommodate themselves for, for the punches. And the counter punches is totally different. The counter puncher is, uh, is waiting, for, um, uh, waiting for counter. So fainting, making, making the opponent lead to, to strike, punch and move, punch and move, punch and move. Uh, there are different type of counter punches, of course. Uh, but basically, th that's the, the stereotype of the counterpuncher. If we look at the um, Kavinder bout from the World Championships, he's, you can call a puncher. He's puncher when, when, when he scores, boom, the, the opponent feels them. His opponent, he, he felt the, the punches many times. Um, and Kavinder, in the, he was shorter and he tried to press, but sometimes maybe he comes off balance and he's very good at reading. And if the counter puncher is a, is a good, is a strong puncher, it's it's very good also to, to be a, a counter puncher. A counter puncher who is a, has a strong punch is very dangerous because 
you attack the counter puncher, boom, boom, and he, he's waiting for you. Uh, so so uh, that is very effective. And we saw in the Kavinder bout that uh, a couple of times when, when the opponent came, came in, boom, boom, he just met him with very strong punches. Yes, I see a good question here. Uh, what if my opponent is a hard hitter and has a very good shell guard defense and I'm a counter puncher? What strategy should I use? Uh, Kima, come, we'll make a, a demonstration. And he comes forward with, with a very close guard. And if I punch here, I'm punching only on, on his uh, gloves. And finally, he will be able to catch me with some hard punches. So, what I have to do, I have to spread my punches. I have to uh, make it difficult for him to read. So, if I only punch here, he will read me and boom, go, go hard to the body. So, I will throw some light punches, boom, and change. Take here and change there. Change here to spread the punches and mix some light, boom, with some hard. Light, 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 boom, hard. And change the, the angles and, and the quick feet. Don't, don't give him the, the, this uh, opportunity to go in with his uh, strong punches. So, light, 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 too hard. And change. Change, 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 change the angles, variation of punches, mixing light and hard punches. Generally speaking. Um, okay. Let me see. Okay, last. This last. In the case of beginners or intermediate, how to identify in which style or type my boxer will fight better? Very difficult, very difficult to say. They, they, they have to explore themselves. Let them explore that they will find. They will find what, what suits them. Or, or you, will, uh, you will see if, um, if the boxer is taking punches uh, all the time when trying to, to box one way. We have to, to tell him, try, try doing something else um, for, for uh, some boxer. But if, if you're talking about beginners and intermediate, so they need to, they need to in the school fight, you one round, you, okay, you, you're defensive, one round you're offensive, one round you, you're boxing on the um, close range or, or medium range, one box in the long distance, uh, and so on. So you, you put them in these different situations, so they learn to manage different situations, and from that, they will go in this direction or in this direction, what suits them better? Suggest some tactics with switching angles. Um, okay, I, uh, yeah. So ch changing angles. Uh, I, I said it a uh, little bit against um, against the Russian boxer move from side to side. Don't don't uh, st stand still. Don't go in one line, but use different angles to to come uh, to the side. Uh, we will. We, we will look at that because it's a, it's, it's a complex question. But I will say like, uh, like this. Um, switching angles, changing stance, um, finding angles from the side. I consider it uh, important. It's good to, for the boxer to have different weapons. But some boxers, they hardly use. They box short hair, in and out, tuck, 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 good control. And they, they don't come from any fancy angles. If you look at Lomachenko, for example, now one of the best boxers and, and the two-time two Olympic gold medalist, um, he's great at uh, switching angles, coming in, in from the side and, and so on. But there are boxers who, who they don't box like that and uh, they still can, can be very effective. Uh, but yes, I, I would say um, it's an important part of, uh, of the boxing to be able to, to surprise not standing in the line of fire all the time but attacking from different angles.